because now uh, we did have him booked uh, for the election of Mike Johnson as the new Speaker of the House. Uh, Newt Gingrich is with us. As you can see, Mr. Speaker, once again, we have a deadly shooting across the country. It seems like the number of fatalities is going up rather quickly here. Uh, news is a bit sketchy. Your reaction to the initial reports here? Well, I mean, first of all, it's horrible. Yep. And I think that we're going to have to really think through a better method of protecting people. Uh, <clears throat> Frankly, in states that have uh, concealed carry and other permits, constitutional carry permits, you have a much more rapid response to these kind of people who are crazy. Uh, and uh, we have no idea what this person's motivation was, but I think we have to assume as we move forward that people, and by the way, this also applies to what happened in Israel uh, when Hamas attacked. Uh, we have to have a greater ability for our citizens to protect themselves, because it's clear the law enforcement comes in after uh, the massacre, uh, but the law enforcement's almost never there to stop the massacre. Uh, this has been true in Europe, it's been true here, uh, it's been true in Israel. So I think we have to think about a whole new strategy, because these kind of people are extraordinarily dangerous, are willing to kill others, have no sense of decency, and frankly, you have to stop them as early as possible to minimize the loss of individual lives. You know, 100%. Uh, while I have you, Mr. Speaker, let me ask you about Mike Johnson. Um, I don't know if you watched his entire speech today. I did, and I found it extraordinarily impressive. Um, I know he's maybe not as well known as some of the other people that were running for office. Uh, a, pretty, a, a pretty extensive background check that we have done today shows he has a very conservative record. Um, for somebody that maybe America was not as familiar with, to give a speech like that in that moment, probably not having any idea, you know, maybe a week ago that he would be in this position, I thought was pretty spectacular. Your thoughts? Well, Cliss and I were both really impressed uh, with how solid he is. I mentioned to you in your radio show earlier that we found out today that he and Cliss both follow each other on Facebook, so that gives him some points with us. But I, I thought uh, he's, he's a very solid person. Uh, he has very solid values. Uh, he's deeply religious. He has a great family. Uh, and I think that we're going to discover that what he combines, which is really very important, is a solid conservative set of principles with a very moderate and reasonable approach to people so that he can actually unify people across ideological boundaries. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he works, because what he said today was almost perfect. He wants this, the committee chairman to play bigger roles. He wants to decentralize so every member has a greater role to play. He sees himself, I think, as the coordinator of the whole House, not as a person who's going to dominate the House. And he's very, very smart. Everyone I've talked to today who knows him well is really impressed with his integrity, his philosophy, and how smart he is. Well, I don't know if you've had any background or experience with, with him. What are the biggest challenges? I always loved your advice that, that you give Republicans often, and that is stick with the 90-10 issues, stick with the 80-20 issues, the 70-30 issues. Stick with the basic fundamental promises that will go back to regular order as it relates to appropriations and budgeting, uh, certainly secure the borders, certainly remain energy independent, certainly come out in support of Israel. Uh, we are now looking at a potential powder keg in the Middle East, and our support will be critical. Holding Iran accountable is going to take real leadership and a real commander-in-chief. I'm not sure whether this president is up for that job. I actually believe he is not. So these are going to be very challenging times. The economy is, is doing very poorly. Uh, we have, you know, 62 percent of Americans now living paycheck to paycheck. We have the highest... 30-year uh, fixed-rate mortgages than we've had in decades. Uh, we have inflation that is now still through, through the roof. Um, and even credit cards, some people using them for bare necessities, and now having interest rates at up to 30 percent, as we reported last night. These are tough times for people, Mr. Speaker. Republicans need to show leadership here. Well, and I think what you're going to find is, uh, first of all, that Speaker Johnson understands that. He referred to it today. He understands from his many friends back in Shreveport 
that life is hard, that this isn't about the Washington lobbyists, the Washington bureaucrats, uh, the billionaires. This is about everyday folks in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I think, as I saw Steve Scalise today, was delighted to be introducing the Louisiana Speaker of the House. I think you're going to see that uh, Mike Johnson is going to, in fact, focus on— <laughs> excuse me. He's going to focus on the human elements of how do we help real people, whether it's gasoline prices, grocery prices, bringing down the cost of living, bringing down the inflation rate, getting back to a reasonable uh, mortgage level. And I can tell you right now that the Republican Budget Committee members have produced a 10-year roadmap to get to a balanced budget in the next decade. And I think if, if the new speaker will work with that committee, uh, he can create a framework within which the country will become much healthier very, very rapidly. And I agree with you, by the way. There are going to have to be real collisions with a very left-wing and incompetent Biden administration and with a relatively left-wing Senate. And by the way, remember, I, I looked at this this evening, and Cliss and I were talking about it because she's so interested in how he's doing. Um, this guy is 51. Now, that means that the head of the Senate, the head of the Senate Republicans, and the president are all a generation older than he is. And I think that level of energy and youth and family orientation with his four children, uh, I think all that's going to play very well in the country. And I think that if he does truly distribute power to the committee chairs and allow the members to talk among themselves, you're going to find uh, that he could potentially do a remarkable job over the next year and a half. All right, Speaker Gingrich, great to have you. We appreciate your time as always. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.